welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Today we're going to talk about a subject that comes up from time to time on astronomyforum.net, and that is the use of bino viewers uh, when you view the sky. Instead of viewing with one eye, you view with two eyes. Uh, it does give you a different experience. I am not going to try to get into the benefits of bino viewing or if I prefer bino viewing over other types of viewing, but I do want to show the beginners uh, some of the things that you're going to need to think about if you want to get into bino viewing uh, as part of your observing. So. Let's uh, open up this little slideshow and uh, I'll show you a few pictures. First thing you need to consider is what pair of bino viewers will you buy? You know, these things can get awfully expensive. You know, we're talking a thousand dollars for some of these uh, particular high, high quality bino viewers. What I would recommend that you do is there is a myriad of very similar quality Chinese imports that are being sold right now. And here's a pair on the screen right here. They come in, come in various brand names. You know, Orion has a pair. Stellar View sells a pair. Myriad brands out there, and they all run a anywhere from 150 to 200 dollars in that range and i would recommend that a beginner just simply start with a pair that's similar to the one that you see here and if you decide that you like bino viewing you can always resell them and get almost all your money back and then upgrade to something of better quality but Personally, I've never upgraded. I still use my $179 pair of Orion Bino Viewers and don't have any problem doing it. The Stellar Views are basically the exact same uh, looking type of Bino Viewer with similar quality. And they're uh, very sufficient for... Uh, starting out in bino viewing and deciding if you like this particular aspect of visual observing. So once you've bought your bino viewers, uh, there's some other questions that you're going to need to answer. And let me show you a little telescope here. This happens to be a Stellar View BV80, Bino Viewer Ready 80 millimeter. And you're looking at it uh, in bino viewer mode right now. Notice that the tube uh, is not very long. It comes with an extension piece that fits uh, right in between the focuser that you see there right here on the end and right in here with the tube. It just simply screws in right here and then the tube becomes much longer and you can use this scope again uh, in its regular configuration and then if you want to do bino viewing without any accessories whatsoever in other words the bino viewer will just simply go right into the diagonal right here i'll show you a picture of that in a minute without any other accessories. And that's why they call this a bino viewer ready refractor because it's ready to go. And it has two configurations, a short configuration like you see here and a longer configuration for uh, contemporary viewing, 80, mil 80 millimeter refractor. So this is, happens to be the Stellar View BV80. Now, there's also some companies out there that you'll find on the internet that will take your long tube refractor and basically cut it and shorten it so that it can come to focus with a bino viewer. And they'll put some uh, threads in there so you can rethread that section that they cut off if you want to use it conventionally. 
and the cost on that is not very high. It runs around a hundred bucks plus shipping. And that's another alternative if you already own an 80 millimeter or 100 millimeter refractor, rich field type, wide field type, uh, with a low focal length, a short focal length. Uh, that's another option for you. So, but anyway, Stellar View uh, can make you one that's Bino Viewer ready and. All you have to do is stick the Bino Viewer in the diagonal right here, and you're off and running. And the key benefit of that is you don't have to use a Barlow, which will, you know, make the field of view a little smaller and also raise the magnification probably beyond what you want to do uh, when you're using a Bino Viewer for wide field views of the Milky Way. So here we have a typical non-bino viewer ready uh, telescope refractor type uh, setup. So if you have a refractor already, uh, you're going to find that a lot of the times the bino viewer will not come to focus if you just stick it into the diagonal. However, there's a company called Seabert Optics, S I. S-I-E-B-E-R-T, Optics, and Harry Siebert sells a very nice, what's called an OCA, Optical Corrector Adapter, which is these uh, pieces of tubing with lenses in them that you see here. And by configuring these in different ways, you can get your Bino Viewer to come to focus very easily. What's really neat about uh, Harry's OCAs is they do not raise the power very much. It's a 1.25x power OCA, so it's not going to influence your view of the night sky very much. These are some of the lowest power OCAs of basically you can find anywhere. I do own one works quite well, and if you have a refractor and it won't come to focus, give Harry a call at Seabert Optics, tell him what you have, and he will send you the appropriate OCA, cause your binary viewers to easily come to focus in a configuration similar to what you see here. Of course, if you have a dob, you're you'll probably have a major problem in coming to focus as uh, Dobbs are no notorious for, reflectors are notorious for not coming to focus with a Bino Viewer. And again, Harry has a configuration of an OCA that you can set up in different ways uh, and come to focus in your Dob. So if you have a Dob, 99% sure you're going to have to have one of these in order to use a Bino Viewer. And again, Seabird Optics has the appropriate OCA to permit you to use Bino Viewers in your reflecting uh, type telescope in a configuration similar to this. If you go to his site, uh, you can look through all these. I didn't want to put all the verbiage up there, but you can read. He's got complete instructions there that you can read on how these uh, OCAs go together uh, in order to permit you to come to focus. So you can go to his site and read all about it. Again, here's what binary viewers look like in a typical configuration with the OCA in it. And typically, this is what you're going to have if you're viewing with a non bino viewer type refractor or reflector in order to come to focus. So the key thing to remember is you got to be kind of careful because some of these OCAs are so long that they will impact the mirror in a diagonal. You could crack your mirror if you're not careful when you insert this into the diagonal. 
Uh, you need to insert it so it's not quite uh, touching the mirror when you tighten it down with the thumb screws. So that's just a little intro on bino viewing. And again, here's those uh, economical pairs of imported bino viewers you'll see all over the internet. They're all very similar. As long as you stick with a major brand like the Stellar View bino viewers or the orion or other folks that are on the internet you should not have a problem if there's you happen to get a pair that are out of collimation and not functioning properly that you can get a return and a replacement very easily so just stick with the major folks when you buy one of these and i don't think you'll have a problem at all it's a neat segment of the hobby, bino viewing, and you can jump out there and Google bino viewing and read all about using two eyes instead of one to view the night sky. Kind of a unique experience, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. As I always say, I wish you clear skies, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later.